All right, are we ready? Ready. Here, get over here. Lay down. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> Care Bears, the trouble with Timothy. Wow, way more. Hello, we're the Care Bears. We're the special group of colorful, round, snuggly little bears whose job it is to help you understand your own feelings and share them with others. As you can see, we have special pictures on our tummies. And those pictures tell you the special job each of us loves to do. I'm tender-hearted bear. See? How mad. And it's my job to help people reach out to each other. I say that love is warm, fuzzy feeling, so go ahead and share it. I'm cheer bear. Yeah. See? Got the rainbow. Wow. Whoa. And if you're sad or not feeling well, I'll slide down a rainbow and make you feel better. Smile, I'm Funshine Bear. So there's a great big happy sun on my tummy to remind you to laugh and look at the lighter side of things. You're in luck because it's me. Good luck, Bear. That's why I'm wearing a four-leaf clover. Happy rainbows. Yep, rainbows. Don't count the number of birthdays. Count how happy you feel. I'm Birthday Bear, and I'll m help you make your birthdays the best ever. I'm Wish Bear, and if you wish on my star, maybe your special dream will come true. A gun. Two. A gun. If you're ever feeling lonely, just call on me, Friend Bear. See, I've got a daisy for you, and daisies for me. Grr, I'm Grumpy Bear. There's a cloud on my tummy to show that I take a grouchies away so you can be happy again. I'm Love A Lot Bear and I have two hearts on my tummy. One is for you and the other is for someone you love. It's my job to bring you sweet dreams. I'm Bedtime Bear and right now I'm a bit sleepy. Are you sleepy too? Now that you know all of us, we hope that you'll have a special place for us in your heart. Just like we do for you. Daddy, with love from all God. of us, the Daddy. Care Bears. A God. A God. Okay. I guess that wasn't the story. Monday was not a good day. On Monday, Timothy made a paper airplane out of his arithmetic test. He sailed across the classroom and landed it in the fish tank. Miss Pratt was angry. Who did that? Miss huh? Pratt pulled the paper airplane out of the fish tank and unfolded it. The paper was wet, but she could still read Timothy's name on it. Timothy, I want you to write, I will not throw things in class ten times and bring it in tomorrow with your homework. I'm mad. Yep, she's mad. Timothy spent Monday after school digging for worms in the backyard. That night, there was a really good movie on television. So Timothy forgot to write, I will not throw things in class ten times. He didn't bring any papers to school on Tuesday. What Timothy did bring to Tuesday was a little white box. He put it in Jennifer's desk. When Jennifer saw the little white box, she was very excited. Look, somebody gave me a present. I wonder what it is. Maybe it's a ring. Jennifer opened the box. Eek, it's a worm. Oh, yuck, get it away from me. Jennifer leaped out of her seat so fast she knocked the box off her desk. The worm fell out and slowly crawled across the floor. Worm. Catch. Yep, yeah, that's the worm. All the children started yelling, Worm, worm, watch out for the worm. Miss Pratt had a bang on her desk with a ruler to quiet them down. Whose worm is that, she asked. It's Timothy's worm, everybody yelled. I see the worm. Miss Pratt sent Timothy to the principal's office. Wednesday was a terrible day when Miss Pratt turned to write on the blackboard. Timothy tried to be funny. 
He stuck out his tongue, crossed his eyes, and made a horrible face. Before he could stick his tongue back in his, and uncross his eyes, Miss Pratt turned around. She did not think he was funny. When Miss Pratt asked, If I have two apples and you have two apples and we put them together, what do we have? Timothy shouted, Applesauce! When Miss Pratt called on Timothy to read, Timothy couldn't find the place in his reader because he was busy drawing swamp monsters in his notebook. Miss Pratt wrote a note to Timothy's parents. When Timothy's parents read the note, they sent Timothy to his room. Nobody likes me, Timothy said to himself. Everybody hates me. Miss Pratt hates me. Jennifer hates me. Even my father and mother are angry with me right now. I don't have a friend in the world. Timothy sighed and sat down on his bed. Suddenly, he noticed that a bear with daisies on its tummy was sitting on his pillow. Timothy was surprised. He picked the bear up. What are you doing here? I don't own a bear like you. Are you a present? The bear giggles. Uh-oh, please stop patting my tummy. It tickles. Timothy was so amazed to hear a bear speak that he almost dropped it. Careful, careful, smiled the bear. You were talking. I've never heard a bear talk before. You never needed a friend so bad before. You said you don't have a friend in the world. That's true, Timothy said sadly. No, it's not. I'm your friend, your snuggly furry friend. In fact, it's my name, Friend Bear. And I come from a land of care a lot. I'll be around as long as you need me, but when you don't need me so much, I'll be on my way. Now I think I can help you. How, said Timothy. The way I see it, you don't like school very much. Why should I, asked Timothy. School's no fun. But it can be, said Friend Bear. I'll show you. Let's play a numbers game with your models. Can you do numbers? Can I do numbers? Can a rabbit roar? Can a pig fly? No, Timothy said. Maybe not, said Friend Bear, but I can do numbers. Now look, you have one swamp monster, one dinosaur, and one snake man. If I take the dinosaur, Friend Bear took the creature and climbed up to the bed, how many monsters do you have left? Two, Timothy said. Very good. As easily as falling off a log, Friend Bear tumbled off the bed and rolled over to Timothy. When Miss Pratt asks you to do arithmetic, why don't you use your imagination? You don't always have to add apples. That's a good idea for arithmetic, said Timothy. But what about reading? I don't like reading. We never get to read about really good things like rockets or monsters. Well, a hat. Yeah, friend bear got a hat. Well, we'll play another game, said friend bear. Do you have a pencil and paper? Of course, Timothy got them out of his desk. This is a reading game, friend bear explained. Can you read, asked Timothy. Can I read? Can a snake tap dance? Can a cow roller skate? I doubt it, said Timothy. Me too, but I can read. Yep. Yeah. Fran Bear picked up the pencil and printed something on a paper. Can you read what it says? Timothy looked at the letters. No, not really. Fran Bear pointed out the words. It said, Swamp monsters from outer space meet the snake man. If that were a story in a real book, would you want to read it? Timothy's eyes lit up. I sure would, but you couldn't, Friend Bear said sadly. Right now, it would make any difference to you if the words were upside down like this. Then Friend Bear stood up on his head, and you'll never get to know them if you draw swamp monsters when you are supposed to be learning how to read. Timothy frowned. I never thought about it that way. Thanks, Friend Bear. 
He picked Friend Bear up by the leg and straightened him up. Oh, Friend Bear giggled. Heavens to fuzzies, that's another ticklish spot. Sorry, but Timothy couldn't resist giving Friend Bear another tickle. Friend Bear giggled, so did Timothy, and they both laughed together. Timothy found that he was feeling better. A guy. What? A guy. That's a dinosaur. Later, when they were playing a game, Friend Bear smiled and said, Timothy, may I ask you a question? Sure, Friend Bear, go ahead. Why do you act silly in school? You know making faces, teasing. Timothy was silent for a moment, and he said, I'm not sure, Friend Bear. Sometimes I wonder if anyone notices me. If they laugh at me, maybe they'll want me for a friend. Maybe, said Friend Bear, but you know, Timothy, it's not hard to have friends. Think about it. If you want somebody to be warm and fuzzy, nice to you, you have to be nice to them, Timothy said. Exactly. See, if you want to make a friend, you have to be a friend. And I guess I shouldn't give them worms, Timothy added. Not unless they happen to be a worm collector's, Friend Bear smiled. Before Timothy went to sleep that night, he thought for a long time about what Friend Bear, Friend Bear had said. Um, yeah. Yeah, Friend Bear's up there, huh? Next day, Miss Pratt said, I have two chickens and you have two chickens. What do we have all together? Timothy almost said, lots of eggs. But he didn't. He just pictured four fire engines instead of chickens and raised his hand. Miss Pratt was very pleased. He didn't draw pictures of swamp monsters during reading time. And when Miss Pratt called on him, he read every word right. Miss Pratt gave him a dinosaur sticker for his notebook. Oh, yeah, it's, he got a sticker, huh? On Friday, Timothy started to stick out his tongue and cross his eyes at Jennifer. Suddenly, he remembered Friend Bear. Instead of making a horrible face, he smiled. Yeah. Jennifer looked surprised for a minute. Then she smiled back. Friday was a very good day. Timothy couldn't wait to tell Friend Bear all about it. He ran to his room, but Friend Bear wasn't sitting on Timothy's bed where he usually sat. Timothy looked in his closet. He looked under his bed. He couldn't find Friend Bear anywhere. Then Timothy looked on his table. There, looking as bright and sunny as a new day, there were two daisies, just like the ones on Friend Bear's tummy. Timothy remembered what Friend Bear had said. But when you don't need me so much, I'll be on my way. Timothy picked up the flowers. Thank you, Friend Bear. I did it. I think I made new friend. He wasn't sure, but Timothy thought he heard the daisies giggle. That's the end. Wow, we Yep, those are all the bears.